Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving conductors, insulators and semiconductors. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous videos covering the theory on types of materials, band theory and conductors, insulators and semiconductors as watching these videos will help you understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. Question 1a says that in terms of band theory, what is meant by the conduction band? Well remember straight from the notes, this is the band of electron orbitals that electrons can jump into from the valence band when excited. Remember electrons being excited just means that they are given energy. And we say that when the electrons are in these orbitals, they have enough energy to move freely in the material, which is called conduction. Part B says, in terms of band theory, what is meant by the valence band? Again, straight from the notes, we have the definition of the valence band, which is the band of electron orbitals that electrons can jump out of, moving into the conduction band when excited. It is the outermost electron orbital of an atom of any specific material that electrons can occupy. Question 2 says to sketch a diagram to show the energy gaps, i.e. the band gaps, between the conduction and valence bands in a conductor, insulator and semiconductor. Well remember we saw this in the theory video comparing conductors, insulators and semiconductors, and the diagram comparing all three looks something like this. So we've got electron energy on the left hand side, we have the conduction bands and valence bands drawn for each with their band gaps. For the conductor first of all we can see the conduction and valence band overlap slightly. For the insulator we have a large band gap between the conduction band and valence band. And lastly for the semiconductor we have a small band gap between the conduction band and valence band. So remember this means that in a conductor the conduction band is partially filled which means there is room in the conduction band for electrons to move which means conduction can take place. For the insulator the valence band is completely filled with electrons whereas the conduction band is empty and that's because the band gap is so large that when electrons in the valence band are excited they never have enough energy to cross this large band gap into the conduction band. And lastly for the semiconductor the band gap is so small the electrons from the valence band can gain enough energy when they are excited to move into the conduction band where they can move about and conduct. Lastly we have question 3 which follows on from what we did in question 2. So for part A it says explain in terms of band theory why semiconductors can conduct electricity though insulators cannot. Well remember whenever we're asked to explain or describe something in terms of band theory we need to mention the key words of valence band, conduction band and electrons. So in a semiconductor, we say the gap between the conduction and valence bands is small, which we just saw in question 2, and at room temperature there is sufficient energy available to move some electrons from the valence band into the conduction band, allowing some conduction to take place. For an insulator, however, the gap between the conduction and valence bands is large. Again, we just saw that in question 2, and at room temperature there is not enough energy available to move electrons from the valence band into the conduction band where they would be able to contribute to conduction. Part B then says explain in terms of band theory why metals are good conductors of electricity. So this time we're talking about conductors because we just talked about semiconductors and insulators above in part A. So remember to explain this in terms of band theory we need to mention the three key words valence band, conduction band and electrons. So we can say that for conductors or metals that in metals the conduction and valence bands overlap so it is very easy for an electron to move from the valence band to the conduction band. We say the highest occupied band, which is the conduction band in this case, is not completely full, allowing the electrons to move and therefore conduct. Lastly, part C says what effect does increasing the temperature of a semiconductor have on its conductivity? Well remember an increase in temperature increases the conductivity of a semiconductor and therefore decreases its resistance. So remember we can think of conductivity as being almost like a current, so the flow of electrons, whereas resistance we know is the opposition to a current flow. So remember conductivity and resistance for semiconductors are essentially opposites. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.